Welcome everyone to my channel. My name is Andal and I'm an author and storyteller. Today's original story is the second chapter of Ember the Swallowtail Butterfly. Not available for purchase yet, but I thought I'd give you a preview. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with anyone who might love this content. I post stories weekly, so stay tuned. Please feel free to comment me and leave your suggestions down below to improve this story. So grab a glass of milk and your favorite cookie and sit back and relax and enjoy this tale. Chapter 2. Big Changes Lila was jolted awake by an unexpected snoring sound, and as she stirred, she found herself face to face with a chinchilla cozily nestled against her. Gently pushing the furry companion aside, she rubbed the remnants of sleep from her eyes. To her surprise, when she looked up, six intense eyeballs were fixed on her. In addition to her friends, Ember and Evelyn, a new presence had made his entrance. A young teenage boy with ebony hair and eyes of the color of dreamy azure blue skies. His gaze held a captivating blend of perplexed concern and a subtle undertone of annoyance, causing Lila to be momentarily entranced by his presence. Ember was quick to announce her awakening, prompting Lila to sit up and assess her surroundings, bewildered about why she found herself in Ember's bed. "'You're finally awake!' Ember's exclamation filled the room. Lila, still in the daze, scanned the room. "'How long was I asleep? What's happened? Why am I in your bed?' "'God, she's awake. I can finally go to work now,' the teenage boy standing next to Ember declared before promptly leaving the room, preparing to depart for the village." Who is that? Lila inquired, wariness evident in her voice. Oh, that's just my 15-year-old brother, Zendeo. Ember, I told you not to call me by my formal name, Zen reprimanded from the bottom of the stairs. Right, I forgot, Zendeo, Ember said, savoring the playful exchange. Hey, he snapped back. All right, Zen, we'll see you at dinner, Evelyn interjected, putting an end to the banter. She stood up beaming. I'll go get breakfast started. Once alone, Lila sought answers about the previous night. So, what happened to me yesterday? Ember took a seat on her bed, emitting a sigh before explaining. He went frightfully pale and started to faint. As soon as Sen came into the door, he caught you. He did what? Lila cried, shifting uncomfortably. I guess he's not as mean as he portrays. No matter how he acts, he still possesses the willingness to save anyone, even those he dislikes. It's a trait in him ever since he was young, Ember elucidated, offering a glimpse into Zen's unexpected compassion. The morning unfolded with persistent rain, casting a dreary atmosphere that cloaked the girls in the cozy confines of their treehouse. Their time was spent immersed in the pages of books and savoring the remnants of yesterday's indulgence, crumbs of leftover scones. The overcast sky held a dominance throughout the day, the sun barely managing to make a fleeting appearance. Upon Zen's return from work, ominous clouds heralded another approaching storm, foreshadowing the unsettling news he carried with him. Uninvited, he stormed into Ember's room, where the girls were engrossed in conversation on Ember's bed, discussing Evelyn's culinary expertise. In Zen's clenched fists, he brandished a parchment, waving it with urgency. The villagers are being informed about this missing girl, he declared, handing the paper to Ember. People start looking around for her. If they come searching in the forest, it might blow our cover. Oh no, Safari has just started, Lila thought. Her internal anxiety surged, realizing the gravity of the situation. Thoughts of her aunt's proximity to the forest weighed heavily on her mind. From who? Ember questioned. We've been hidden for eight years. Who would come looking for us? Anyone who would search for us would have given up years ago. I think Lila would be safe here. Our location is very isolated. No one comes by, besides Annalise. Still, I'm saying there are possibilities. We're really close to the village. If a villager suspicious of me follows me here, he could proclaim to everyone in the town that they've found not only the child, but the missing royals of the kingdom. Who knows if we might be handed over to our enemies that way. Dinner unfolded with an air of tension, with Lila unable to shake off the burden of guilt for the predicament her escape 
had brought upon her friends. Seated across from Zen, a palpable distance separated them, their occasional dissatisfied glances punctuating the uneasy atmosphere. Evelyn intervened to diffuse the unsettling silence. Lila is sleeping in Amber's bedroom, just so you know. You should leave them alone and not be bothersome to everyone. Lila will be a good helper around the house. What you need to do with this is to stop complaining that this ever had to happen to you and learn to stick with it. After some resistance, Zen relented. Fine, as long as I don't find her or her chinchilla in my room again. I've seen him sneaking into my room a few times. He's annoying as a rodent. It's a she, rather protested, maintaining a semblance of normalcy as she licked her spoon clean. Her name is Bella. Well, whatever, Zen dismissed, pushing his untouched bull aside. I'm coming to bed. I'm not hungry anyways. He left, slamming his bedroom door behind him, prompting a collective sigh from the three girls. I'm afraid we may have to deal with big changes, Amber remarked, her appetite gone as she assisted Evelyn in cleaning up the dishes for the night. Lila joined in, ensuring each bowl was scrubbed clean. Following their chores, Lila followed Ember upstairs. Given the circumstances, Ember allowed Lila to sleep in a hammock suspended over her bed. As the two girls dressed for bed, they hoped sleep would embrace them. However, before Ember extinguished the candle and bid good night, Lila confided in her. Lila peered over the hammock, addressing Ember. Ember, if I caused you any trouble, you can send me home. You know that, right? I feel I'm such a burden to you, along with your brother. Oh, Lila, it's not just you. It's just he wants to throw a fit about everything he doesn't like, she shifted in her bed, attempting to smile calmly. He does it every time. You see, if I hadn't met you, I don't think any day would be worth remembering. The two girls shared a light-hearted giggle as Ember blew out the candle. Despite her wishes, sleep eluded Lila, peeking out of the hammock, once more, she gazed at the moonlight streaming through the window, pondering the weight of her presence. But do you really think it was best for me to come? To be continued.